I start on one thing and then I get distracted by something else. I start doing one thing and then I just go and watch The Simpsons on DVD all day and have a cup of tea. And I got so bored of never finishing anything that I thought I would try and sit down and write a story from start to finish to make my little cousins laugh one Christmas. And it was about nine years ago when I sat down to write a story. And I didn't know what I was going to write. I had one idea in my head, and that idea was that it would be an old man having a fight with a big dog. And I don't really know why I thought that would be a good idea, but that was what was in my head. Hands up here who likes to write stories, if any of you do. Very good. Um, hands up if when you're writing a story, you just sort of make it up as you go along. There you go. And hands up if you're the other type of writer who kind of knows everything that's going to happen when you start out. Very good. Quite a few of you. Well, I sort of make it up as I go along. Hands up if you find it really hard to write stories. It's too difficult. I don't want to do it. I never want to do it. It's too hard. It's too difficult. There you go. Um, well, I'm here to tell you that you only need one idea in your head to start writing a story. You just need one idea in your head. How many ideas do you need? One. one. How many ideas? One. How many ideas? One. Now say it like this. One. Now say it like this. One. 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 You just sounded like complete weirdos to everyone watching. Right. Um, you only need one idea in your head. So I started off, and I had this idea of a big dog having a fight with a horrible old man. And I sat down, and I started writing this story. And I started writing, and I started writing. And as I started writing, it was on Christmas Eve nine years ago. Christmas Eve nine years ago. And I started writing, and as I started writing, all these other characters came into my story. And that story eventually turned into Mr. Gum. And I didn't know it, but as I was writing, I was making up all these other characters that were going to be in the story. Does anyone know any of the characters in the Mr. Gum books? Eliza? Um, well, there's Polly and Friday and the uh, Gingerbread Man. Really. Oh, you're going to get three answers for the price of one, yes. There is a character called Polly, who I'll talk about in a moment, and a character called Friday O'Leary. Um, actually, hands down for a moment. Unless we all want to do aerobics. Right arm up. Left arm up. Right arm up, left arm up, right arm up, left arm up, take off your head, throw it out the window. <laughs> I said that at a school in Birmingham the other day, right? When I said take off your head and throw it out the window, this one kid actually did, not really. Now, um, <laughs> what were you saying? Uh, characters, somebody mentioned Friday O'Leary. You mentioned Friday O'Leary. Does anyone know what Friday O'Leary likes to shout out in my books? He shouts out something quite unusual. Do you know what he shouts? The truth is a lemon meringue. The truth is a lemon meringue. Nice and loud? Fantastic. Nice and loud. The truth is a lemon meringue. Isn't that brilliant? Even louder. The truth is a lemon meringue. That's amazing. Louder. <laughs> the truth is a lemon meringue. Fantastic. You can't get louder than that, can you? Louder. The truth is a lemon meringue. Don't you shout at me. Get out. <laughs> yes, he shouts out the truth is a lemon meringue from time to time. I don't know why. He just does it. Friday O'Leary might be walking down the street to buy a sandwich. <laughs> the truth is a lemon meringue. He might be sitting down to watch The X Factor <laughs> or some such other cultural activity. <laughs> the truth is a lemon meringue! <laughs> After three, I'd like you all to shout out the truth is a lemon meringue. One, two, three. The truth is a lemon meringue! Weirdos. Right, um, so there's Friday O'Leary. He came into my story while I was writing it. Who else? Who are the characters in my books? Hello. Alan Taylor, a little gingerbread man with electric muscles called Alan Taylor. Uh, yes, he wasn't in my first book. He came in my second book, but he's one of my characters. Hello. Um, uh, Jake. Jake the dog. Yes, that's right. There's a great big dog in my first book, and uh, he's the dog who Mr. Gum, who is the baddie, is having a battle with. One more character. Who, can, who knows one else? Hello. Bully William. Bully William. And the great Scottish accent. Bully William the third. It's very scary, isn't it, in that accent? Where I come from, it's like, Billy William the third. Yes, mm, how lovely. Okay. Billy well, William the third! You learn your books right! You got that Billy William the third! Yeah. Billy William, Billy William. Lovely, lovely. Wimbledon. Um, <laughs> having tea with the Queen. Uh, <laughs> yes, there's a horrible butcher in my books called Billy William the third. And here's Mr. Gum's sidekick. So all those characters came into my story, but one person mentioned a little girl called Polly who came into my story, and she's the heroine. And she's about nine years old, and she's about that tall. Now, Polly actually has a really long name. That's not her full name. She's got a very strange name. It's a very long name. Would you like to hear what Polly's full name is? Yeah. Let's see if I can remember it. Right. So the little girl in my book, she's nine years old. She's that tall. Her name is Jammy. 
Grammy, Lammy, for Hopper, for Hopper, Berlin, Stereo, EO, EO, Leb, Sayep, Mnemonica, Lestrapec, De Grespin, De Crespin, De Spespin, De Vespin, De Whoop, De Loop, De Brunkle, Merry Christmas, Lenoir. I will just run that past you again, because it's quite confusing at first. So she's nine years old. She's about that tall. Her name is Jammy Grammy Lammy for Hupper for Hupper, Berlin Stereo, EO EO, Lebsi, Yepna Monica, Le Stray Pet, De Crespin, De Crespin, De Spespin, De Vespin, De Whoop, De Loop, De Brunkle, Merry Christmas, Lenoir. That's why everyone calls her Polly. It saves time. So I wrote all those characters, and I wrote 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 and for once in my life. But it wasn't actually a book, right? It was just words on a computer screen. How do you get the words off the computer screen? Scrape them off with a butter knife. How do you get the words off the computer screen? You print them off, don't you? So I printed them off. Shake There's the printer. Shake and vroom. 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 Shake and It down. My name is Andy Stanton. I like to write stories. I write all the stories and I get all the glories. Sometimes I write stories about outer space. And sometimes I write stories about your face. Hello, hello, how delightful to meet you. Um, yeah, so I took it to my little cousin's house, the story I'd written on Christmas Day in the morning. When I read my story, did they listen to me? Not really, they did not. Why didn't they listen to me? I will tell you. It was Christmas Day. They don't do much chocolate. They were too excited. They didn't want to listen to a story. All they wanted to do was run about all over the place, bounce off the walls, and punch their little sister in the face. <laughs> Horrible children, they don't deserve a story. I forgot all about my story. I took it home like this. This is the worst Christmas ever. Nobody likes my story. It's freezing cold. And for some reason, I'm speaking like a Welsh cartoon character. It's a very strange Christmas. I forgot all about my story. Eventually, one day, I was in my room two years later, and I was looking around and looking through the drawers, because sometimes you don't know what you've left uh, in your drawers, do you? Like an old biro, or a 50p piece, or a time machine or a time machine, or a time machine, or a time machine, or a time machine. Should I stop doing that? And, uh, or a time machine. 